Bienvenue. the anti-checker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulty. What is going on YouTube? This is Michael J. Crawford, the anti-checker, and joined via audio is Mrs. Anti-checker. She's sitting actually just a few feet away from me, and uh, so, and on her own mic, go ahead and say hi to everybody. Hey, everyone. So, uh, yes, the sultry voice behind the music and behind the Captain Redneck intro and all that. She is here, so if you guys have anything to ask me and Mrs. Anti Trekker, we are both here. We don't really have a topic in mind. We just wanted to kind of check in. Obviously, both of us so grateful for all your support that you've given us over the last few months, so thank you. Uh, Perk wants to know if uh, Captain Redneck shows up, if you're going to do the Captain Redneck is in on the bridge live for us. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> uh, so, Kronos is in the house, says hello, Anti Trekker, Mrs. Anti Trekker, Darth Revan is here, Ricky is here. Boy, I've got the whole gang here today. Kronos um, uh, says, What is support? Not sure what you're talking. Oh, it's, what is support? What do you mean, what is support? Uh, first of all, you guys have been subscribers, a lot of your patron supporters, all that. But also, most importantly, uh, last, oh gosh, what was it? How long ago was it now in Ime? Do you remember? When she passed away? Yeah. Um, it was just a few days before her birthday, so a few days before the 28th. Of May, right? Yeah. So yeah, so towards the end of May, uh, Mrs. Anti Trekker's wife, or Mrs. Anti Trekker's My wife. wife. Sister <laughs> unexpectedly <laughs> passed away. And you guys ponied up uh, over $1,000 so to help pay for a trip for her to go uh, back and spend some time with the family. I don't know if you were with us at that point, Kronos, but yeah, it was absolutely mind-blowing the, the amount of support you guys gave us. Um, Luke is in the house, says, anti Trucker, how are things going in the Crawford family? Feeling better overall? Well, we're, we're hanging in there. I mean, it's hot. We're tired. Good old regular summer stuff. Uh, what's, what are you laughing at? <laughs> are you really lore because they've never seen you together? <laughs> no. Yeah. She That's is a big no. She is. She is definitely not lore. I didn't see that comment. Who, who said that? No, if you are lore. Oh, if I'm Darth Re Re Yeah, it says, if you're, if you're really lore because I've never seen you in the same room. Ugh. Yeah, I'm, def <laughs> I'm definitely not lore. No. Mm -hmm. uh, Sci-Fi Sith Dan is here. He's one of my regulars. King Waspinator is also here. Says greetings to the mysterious Mrs. Auntie T. <laughs> you are mysterious now, babe. That's good. That's how I like it. <laughs> Stonewolf says it's 98 degrees in Texas. You <sighs> Okay, so Ricky asked first question. What's your thoughts so far on The Expanse? Now, this is Anti Trekker. I uh, we didn't really know anything about it before we started watching it. So, what did you think? Um, I think it's really good. It's hard to keep my attention focused on um, a lot more modern sci-fi. So, I think it's really good. Yeah, she she's the kind of person that if she doesn't like it, she just won't watch it. And she's been sitting by my side watching the entire run so far. So, fake lore reloaded. Yeah. <laughs> Do we get to see Mrs. Anti Trekker? Not today. I don't have another webcam for her, and so that wasn't. But that's how I remain mysterious. Yes. So she is. Yes, yeah, she, she will forever be the disembodied voice of sultriness that you guys will now have to just imagine what she looks like. But just know that she's pretty freaking hot. So, 
Uh, Luke says, what does Mrs. Antitricker think of Lore Reloaded? Does she think he's a Packlid or a Rancor Keeper? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what the Rancor Keeper is, right? No, what is that? Refresh my memory. <sighs> All right, I will, I will get a picture for you because it's from, it's from Return of the Jedi. Okay. Um, do you remember Jabba had the giant pet monster? Yes. Okay. So, the Rancor Keeper is the guy that took care of him. So, are you ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to bring him to your monitor. Yes, that's it. Yeah, so, that, <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the Rancor Keeper. And a Packlid is a race of very, very slow people from Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, um. And so, they're famous for saying, we make our ship go they're just really ridiculously stupid um and try, here's a picture of a pack lid for you to see uh-huh so is lore reloaded a pack lid or a rancor keeper i think he's biracial <laughs> <laughs> there you go so the official word for Mrs. Antitrekker is that Lore Reloaded is biracial. He is one half Packlid and one half Rancor Keeper. There we go. That's why we brought her onto the show so that we could actually make um, make that determination. So now we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a Packlid Rancor Keeper. That's right, Josh. Um, Wow, that now I was not expecting that as a as a starter for our <laughs> conversation. A pickled packlid. That, okay, Kronos. Um. So, yeah, you, <laughs> it's just that. Oh man, you got me, babe. That was good. Um, Mr. Lundell is in the house. How are you doing? You uh, now are in the wonderful presence of. Mrs. Anti Trekker, the uh, she is sitting just off camera here and answering your questions. Is that canon now? Asked James. Yes, I would say that the fact that Lore is a Packlid Rancor Keeper is in fact canon. Um, King Waspinator says such blatant Packlid phobia. I expect better from human females. So he's a little disappointed in you. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, man. So, John says, describe Antitrekker on the first date. Um, he was adorable. He uh, was very cute, very shy, but very determined. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, now, I don't know if I told the whole story about how he met, but, now, you know, she did think that, uh, <laughs> that uh, I was a complete psycho when we first met. Uh, I didn't think you were a psycho. I thought you were ugly <laughs> oh, okay wow Thanks. it's true yeah she thought i was ugly because i had a mustache she hates mustaches which is why i have the beard but no mustache just just fyi uh chronos throws a couple of bucks into the super chat thank you so much it says it's just way too early for this so ptsd and he wants to see number eight now babe just so you know i know you you know the basics of it but you see on the sidebar there those are all the animations that joshua and i have put together okay. so so whenever somebody uh does a super chat they get to pick one if they want so he wants this classic borg 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 Porky, come here, Porky. Jumpy, jumpy, Porky. <laughs> that sound always gets me. We just hear the poor guts slowly spilling out. Uh, let's be fair, Mrs. Anti Trekker isn't on the show. She's close to it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, your aunt, your voice, her voice is on the show. So. Uh, I watched the Packlet, uh, the Picard announcement this morning. He's too old. He started to repeat things he said. He's in his prepared remarks. Hopefully, they're paying him well. Um, now, you guys know I, what I said about the Picard thing. That I, I tend to agree. I think he's too old to reprise the role. I think they should have let the character go with dignity, but they're not. Um, now, 
Babe, I know the only thing you really like about the next generation was Picard. So you tell me, what are your thoughts on Picard reprising his role for a new Star Trek series? No. I think no. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I have to say is no. Yeah, I, and, and it's nothing against Patrick Stewart, but the man is past, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't even say past his prime, it's just that he is decaying. I mean, if you look at, um, you know, a lot of people thought, ooh, look how they made him look so decrepit in Logan. No, that's how he looks. And so it's not, yeah. Um, drawing for the fun of it says, Mrs. Antitrekker, from one anim animator to another, you should be very proud of your son's work. I'm extremely proud of him. He's yeah. very, very talented. Yeah, and, and drawing for the fun of it has made some of the really cool pictures that I've shown you. Him and Acid Designs are the ones that have been, uh, have given me all these really cool pieces of art that I've shown you. Oh, thank you. Um, mm, those are neat. She's about 20% on the show. <laughs> Andy Checker, set a photo. Uh, I sent a, you your, a photo to Discord in the general. In the general. I want Mrs. Andy Trekker's opinion on it. What is with you guys and sending me stuff on Discord during the show? All right, let me go there real quick and see if it's let me go to present. <laughs> so this is a picture of what Sci-Fi Sith believes you look like if you were in the Star Wars universe. All right. Okay. Uh, not really, but uh, okay. <laughs> I don't think it's that far off. Oh, I think it is. <laughs> um, and what else? Uh, can you have Mrs. Anti Trekker do a Captain Redneck intro, but with my name? Says so Sci Fi Sith. <laughs> what is that? Uh, his name is Sci Fi Sith Dan. Sci Fi Sith Dan? Yes. Mm. Sci Fi Sith Dan is on the bridge. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Luke throws two euros, and that's what that symbol is, by the way, is euros, if you didn't know that one already, uh, into the chat and says, let your wife pick one she wants and didn't see yet. So uh, you see the list there on the side. If there's anything there that you're not, like you might have not seen it since we added sound and stuff or whatever, or if you just don't remember it, you can pick any of those numbers there. Um, how about nine? Number nine, Lore Meets Drax. I love that one. Oops. I am Lore Reloaded, here to get this entire thing started here for Lore. <laughs> you just tripped over something that was so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see you got a little bit of a delay, I know, obviously, because... Uh, when you heard it, it was live for us, but now you're seeing the end of it there on the live stream. So yeah, that's uh, that's one that he did based on the Drax laughs too much thing that he did on his own channel, uh, which is my absolute favorite video that he did on his channel. Um, Derek says, "Hello there, Mrs. Anti Trekker. You are very brave for joining in the stream." Why? Thank you. <laughs> and Derek, tell me. Uh, uh, tell Mrs. Anti Trekker where you are right now. Uh, something like Harrison Ford bit, uh, bits in Young Indiana Jones. I'm not sure what you're talking about there. Can we get an official Mrs. Anti -tr logo or animation? Uh, we'll have to talk to Joshua about that. He, so they want to see like a, a, a version of you for uh, to pop up there. So. Sci-Fi Seth Dan says, give Mrs. Anti Trekker my thanks. She can see the comments, so she... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she has her own monitor, so she can see the comments as they come up. Um, so all you have to do is say, Mrs. Anti Trekker, thank you. But I'm sure she, you got that, right, babe? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Darth Revan says, Mrs. Anti Trekker is the... Uh, is there a movie that Anti Trekker loves and you think is unwatchable? Um, I wouldn't say unwatchable. Um, would you say so, honey? Well, I would say that you don't appreciate as nearly as much as me as on a few, like, uh, I think of Princess Bride. Yeah, that, that's okay. 
Yeah, so you just, so she thinks it's okay. I love it. And so that's one that we have a strong difference on. Honestly, on most movies, that's about as far as our separation gets. We generally don't hate what the other person likes. We just may not like what the other person likes as much. Uh, the only real exception is, and I've talked about this on the live stream before, is that you like your, your old school period pieces like um, Pride and Prejudice and stuff, and I'm not into that. Um, which, uh, fortunately, you also really like Avengers and Star Trek and S Star Wars up until the new crap. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, Perik throws a couple of euros in and says, Got, gotcha for George. So what, what they're talking about there is that George wanted you to hear his Palpatine voice in this wonderful video called Return of the Lore Master. Now, of course, you won't see it in real time, but you'll get the idea if you listen. You're wrong, your highness. I am lore reloaded. A lore master. Like my father before me. So be it, law master. If you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. Ah! Oh! Ah! Ah! You will pay the price for not going with the studio's vision. Father, please! Huh? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> so that is my good friend Captain George as Palpatine. I think he does a really good Palpatine voice. What do you think? Yeah, sounds good. I like it. <laughs> and so I don't know if you caught it, but Derek said he's in his sitting room, but he happens to live in the best part of the planet, Ireland. So that's what I was... Uh, so we have people representing uh, Great Britain. Not true. We got a few people I know from Great Britain in the, in the chat right now. Does Mrs. Antitrekker watch Lore Reloaded? Do you watch Lore Reloaded's channel? Nope. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Alex throws a couple of pounds into the chat. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, says, been a tough week. Need the turdis. Turd Baker rules. <laughs> so I don't think his name is Turd Baker, but I like that. By the way, you're a big fan of Baker, right? I'm a big fan of who? Isn't that the name of the doctor? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, you, you follow him like on Facebook and stuff, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, see, the wife is actually more into Doctor Who than me, believe it or not. So. <laughs> what? Is this right? <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, Josh Street wants to know, uh, Mrs. Antitracker, what is the worst movie Antitracker made you watch? I'm sure you can um, think of a few. I don't know. The worst one? I, I don't like the, what is it, 1979-1980 Dracula movie. I thought it was absolutely r ridiculous, and he told me how great it was, and it was just stupid. 19, what? What? Dracula with um, Frank Langella. No, no. This is, is there asking a movie that I made you watch that you, you, ma you made me watch that and I didn't like it. The Frank Langella. Oh, no, no. You, I, I thought you liked the Frank Langella. No, Dracula. I thought it was stupid. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there you go. Frank Langella, Dracula. I don't remember. I made you watch that one? Yes, you did. Okay. Does she YouTube at all? No, um, Mrs. Antitracker doesn't really do anything on YouTube other than comment, and uh, she will occasionally show up here. Uh, Mi Mrs. Antitracker, tap the mic twice if you're being held hostage. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot hold me hostage. Yes. Yeah, she, yeah, that would not work. Uh, Doctor Who fans unsubscribed. Well, King Waspinator is unsubscribing because you're a Doctor Who fan. Okay. Yeah, so see ya. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> again uh, again for the Brazilian time Ireland is a republic I even sent you a picture to help I know I know I know find the republic of Ireland Darth um, Quantum Leaper says you added to the Turtis animation yes that is Turtis 2 point mark 2 you can see it's actually changed the name on uh, on the list and with the because you know with the female doctor right around the corner we thought that you know we should do a little homage to that 
Uh, uh, to be King Waspinner says, to be honest, the Frank Langella Dracula from the 70s was pretty lame. So, so now you're agreeing with her, but a minute ago you were threatening to unsubscribe because she likes Doctor Who. What, what's your <laughs> deal, man? And of course, and, and this has come from a guy who's named after a character from Transformer Beast Wars because we know what a classic that was. Uh. <laughs> uh, she's got you on the Langella Dracula movie, just terrible. I, I don't even remember making her see it, to be honest with you, because she's always been more of a Dracula fan than me. Especially, and, like, you love the Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee stuff. That's why you told me to watch it. Oh, okay. It's shortly after we first met, so very long ago, but you said, hey, you got to see this one, and it was, it was awful. So Josh says, Mrs. Antitrekker, Antitrekker says you like Hellraiser. Love Hellraiser. Yes. So she absolutely does. Uh, the first two, we should yeah, qualify yeah. that. The first, Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser 2, we both really enjoy. She saw the first one before me. We saw the second one together in theaters, didn't we? Yes. And then we saw the third one together in theaters and thought this franchise is going downhill. Yeah. And then all the others went straight to video. <laughs> Uh, 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 now he says, Michael, tap the back mic twice if you are being held a hostage. No, I am <laughs> quite willingly a hostage of Mrs. Antitrekker. Um, there should be a Sith lore Antitrekker. I have no idea what that means, Captain Jesse. Darth Ren says, Antitrekker is actually a hot, uh, a hot button thing here. We kind of get vexed when people... Uh, when we hear, but you're American, so we understand it. Oh, as far as referring to Ireland, not as a rep as the Republic of Ireland, or uh, and I get that. You know, it's it's one of those things because we're completely ignorant of what's going on in the UK as far as day to day news. So, uh, Luke Fovark, Fovark, I'm going to get it right one of these days, Luke. Uh, who, by the way, I've told you about Luke before. He lives in Paris. Uh, says, Mrs. Antitrekker, how is Michael's diet going? Is he being consistent with it, or do you need to pit punch him a bit sometimes? He's actually doing pretty well. Let's see? He's, there he's, you go. He's, he's doing pretty much what I'm telling him to do, and he's eating what I make. So he's yeah. doing well. Yeah. I, basically, I just, I, I just said, you know what? You're in charge of the kitchen. I'm not touching it. Don't, you know, don't ask me, because I'll want to get stuff that's horrible for me. Uh, does Mrs. Antitrekker play any video games? Mrs. Antitrekker and I played <laughs> extensive World of Warcraft for a while, and also we played Diablo 3 together for quite a bit. And Diablo 2. In fact, Diablo 2 is really what, what, the first one we really got into, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, we played Diablo 2 to frickin' death. Um, and so, yeah. Um, ask Mrs. Antitrekker... Batman and Superman for a husband of force to choose. Batman. Yeah, I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> um, see, she doesn't even hesitate. That's it. It's time for a review, a review on Hellraiser 2. Well, if I were to do that, I'd probably want to do the first one first. Uh, what countries are represented here? Uh, Silgo? What's Silgo, Perrick? I, 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 unless you, maybe you mistyped it, I know if you're typing on your phone, because I'm not sure what you mean by Silgo. Mrs. Antitrekker, which Star Trek is your favorite Star Trek? Which Star Trek show? Yeah. Uh, the original series. Yeah, I, I knew that was going to be your answer, but I didn't want to speak for it. Dracula AD 1972 is pretty awful, even with Cushing and Lee. Uh, what are you? Did you see that one? I did. Uh, I liked it much better when I was a little kid when I saw it the first time, but yeah. But I still love Hammer films in general. See, I never got into the Hammer films. I'll watch them every now and then, but yeah, that's not my thing. Uh, Darren Wagner uh, is says, World of Warcraft is on fire right now. They're burning... Uh, to, they're bur the burning of Teldrassil has everyone in an uproar. I, I haven't, we haven't played Warcraft in years, so I don't even know what's going on there. So I, <laughs> Porrick says Kirk or Picard, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> and he says Spock or Data. So Spock. Yeah. I, I, had, I, a, I had a crush on him when I was three, so definitely Spock. <laughs> yeah. And and I'll, you know, I'll tell you, yes, Mrs. Anti Trekker and I, you know, I know some people hate me for being so biased towards the original series, but she is more biased towards the original series than I am. And so, in fact, you, I, I would even go so far as to say that. With only a few episode exceptions, you really don't like 
next generation. No. Uh, you thought DS9 was okay. Yeah. Um, did not care for Voyager Enterprise. No. And despised Discovery. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Perk says, I was asking all the Irish people here what counties, like states in Ireland they're from. Oh, okay. I didn't. I, I, that's, that's why I didn't understand you. Um, Sci-Fi Sis says, Andy Trekker, you and Mrs. Andy Trekker's big boy Batman here. Huh? Okay. <laughs> I, d d I don't know what that means, but okay. Uh, thoughts on the new Picard Trek show? We both think that it's just a bad idea. Uh, Patrick Stewart's too old. He's let Picard die with dignity, really. Uh, Quantum Leaper wants to know who wins in a fight, Michael Burnham versus Mrs. Anti Trekker. Is that for me? Well, you can answer it. Do you think you could take Michael Burnham in a fight? Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, there you go. And since she's always right, I'm going with that. Mrs. Anti Trekker wins. Yes, Blizzard destroyed the Night Elf capital. Good thing, too, that big trees. Oh, the big tree. You used to, because you used oh, to yeah. play there. Wow, they, they, they destroyed it, huh? That kind of sucks. Yeah, it does. Okay, so Mr. Captain 93 wants to know what who's better, Michael Burnham or Wesley Crusher? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I'd have to say Michael Burnham. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to have to have a talk about that one. Uh, Josh Street says, what's wrong that Anti-Trekker made you voice Burnham for that for number four? Number four is the animation where uh, I beam over to the Star Trek Discovery universe. And is, you... it, is it wrong? Yeah, he, he, every time that animation plays, Josh always complains that it seems so wrong to hear your voice coming out of Michael Burnham. Oh, um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Okay, Anti Trekker, tell us the truth. Is Anti Trekker really three feet tall and standing right now? He is. How'd you guess? You weren't supposed to tell them that. <laughs> Jeez. Now you know. You realize you started just started a thing on the internet, and everybody's going to be convinced I'm three feet tall. Uh, Darren says I wouldn't mind the Picard recurrent rec returns thing if the show was helmed by Manny Cotto from Enterprise. But here's the thing, Darren, and, and I don't know if you've seen Patrick Stewart making public appearances lately. He doesn't, and I know someone commented on this earlier, but he doesn't seem like he's all there anymore. That he, he does, he's tending to repeat himself. He's, he's getting confused easily. I don't know that it's a good idea. I don't know that he's got enough good years in him to really make a series any, at, at all. Uh, and if he can handle the, the work schedule doing a TV show. Uh, things just got meta. It all makes sense. Anti Trekker hates Burnham because his own wife is a Mary Sue. <laughs> You're a Mary Sue now, babe. Okay. Uh, sci fi Sith says Anti Trekker, you and Mrs. Anti Trekker's big boy Batman since she chose Batman for husband. Oh, so I'm like big boy Batman because meaning fat, you know. Um. So I'm Batman. Okay. Um. Wesley, uh, Mr. Londell says Wesley's a bit more palatable than Burnham. Uh, I can't stand him. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Mrs. Anti Trucker acts too well to be Burnham. Well, to be fair, I think that, that her uh, uh, Sonequa Martin Green's performance as Burnham is really more based on the, vis the vision of the show. I think they want her to be stoic, and she comes across as wooden. Uh, Mr. Londell says, I'm Tweaky from Buck Rogers. Beady, beady, beady. <laughs> uh, Perk throws a couple of euros in the chat. Thank you so much, Perk, my friend. And wants to see number four. You got it. So this is the animation they were talking about that Josh gets worked up about because of your voice. Well, um, all right. Well, let's beam down to the planet. Um, energize, Mr. Scott. Aye, Captain. Welcome aboard the USS Discovery. There's got to be some kind of other universe, right? Please, send me back. Oh, my God, send me back. I beg you, no, send me back. Oh. <laughs> and... <laughs> 
Uh, Alan wants to know if Lore is a Mary Sue. No, because a Mary Sue implies someone who's universally loved, uh, is skilled at lots of different things, is generally always right. Lore is none of those things. So, uh, he, in fact, he's kind of the opposite. I don't know what the opposite of a Mary Sue would be because he's kind of universally hated. He's not skilled at anything. He, yeah, I don't, I don't see how he could possibly use whatever the opposite is. And Chronos says, diabetes. That's just, <laughs> uh, that's horrible. Derek throws a couple of pounds into the chat. Wants to see number 13 just for badness. And by the way, the whole running joke with number 13 is they picked that one just because it's the longest one. You're wrong, your highness. I am lore reloaded. A lore master. Like my father before me. So be it, lore master. If you'll not be tough, you will be destroyed. You will pay the price for not going with the studio's vision. Father, please! Huh? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I think the best part of, of Captain George's voice is that laugh at the end. That really does sound like that should be Emperor Palpatine. Um, Sci-Fi Sit Dan says, Anti Tracker, who is better with medical treatment, you or Mrs. Anti Tracker? I'm. As far as getting? Yeah, that, I'm not sure what you mean. If you mean getting, well, I mean because Mrs. Anti Tracker, she goes to her appointments, but I, I go to my appointments. I don't know. Um. So yeah, that's kind of confused. Uh. How do we know that that's really Mrs. Antitrekker, not Lore talking like a girl? Do you really think Lore could do that voice? I mean, really, come on. Um, the opposite of Mary Sue is Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, Lore Reloaded is a Mr. Bean, then. Um, I like Mr. Bean, though. I know so, you do. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Mrs. Angie Tricker, why do you let your husband choose a? Why did you let your husband choose a turd as an avatar? Um, I don't let him do anything. It's his own thing. If he wants to do it, he can do it. There you go. See, she's 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 not the ball and chain that you guys think all wives are, uh, but that's why she's awesome. Um, uh, let's see. Kronos throws 10 bucks into the chat. Thank you so much, Kronos. You are so awesome. It says, it is time for a lesson on how to shoot oneself and others at the same time. Tricky? No, not tricky at all. It's all about gun safety. So have you seen that one before? Have I seen that one? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't think so. No. Okay. Uh, Lore could, could be using autotune. No, I don't think Lore could make his voice sound that good. Um, and yeah, I just don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Lore cannot talk that low. <laughs> uh, if Lore could do that voice, uh, I'm very afraid. Yeah, me too. Uh, that's not his wife. It's paid actress Nichelle Nicholas, probably. 
Hey, compliment. Yeah. I'll take that compliment. Uh, Sci-Fi Sith says, you get a couple of pounds. Oh, boy. Uh, you put it on the same some pound. You put on some pounds. Joking because pound is a two-sided pun. That's just bad. <laughs> That's really just bad. Uh, the one always sounds quiet on my phone. Is it in mono? Uh, it might be. I might have to adjust the sound. Uh, so Darth Revan throws a couple of euros in. Thank you so much. Says donation to buy step ladder to help you, midget. See, I told you you started something now. Mm -hmm. And wants to see number 15. You got it. I have to save that old person. Sam. Well, thank you very much for helping me steal this. <laughs> <laughs> Short and sweet. Now, James, we don't talk about my job, so not, Mrs. Antitrucker is not going to tell you what, where I work any more than I would, so don't try to trick her. Uh, Craig says, and I'm sorry, Craig, I missed you earlier. I know you said that you were, you've been watching the Star Wars reviews and have been enjoying it so far. Awesome. I, I, let me know what you think once you get all the way through it. It says, nerds aren't supposed to have girlfriends. I don't have a girlfriend. I have a wife. We've been married for 25 years this December, so yes. Midget is hate speech. Only terrible people would say or type the word midget. Shame. Okay. Uh, you may be a midget, but you <laughs> might have a big shoe size. Okay. What were you laughing at? A big shoe size. Huh? A big shoe size. Oh, the big shoe are size. You, yeah. Are you not getting that? Yes, yes, I got that. And yes, I, I wear very large shoes. Isn't that right? Yes, he does. Yes. Uh, Lawmaster. Uh, my first super chat, and it was better than the Shazam movie. <laughs> yes. I, th I think that uh, Shazam is definitely going to be better than the Shazam movie. That What did you think of the trailer for Shazam? Um, I thought it was awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I remember I asked you, was it, was it a television show? <laughs> yeah, it really, yeah, it kind of looks like it should be on the WB. Yeah. You know, it, yes, it yeah. does. It just looks, yeah, it looks like absolute crap. Uh, if Andrew Trucker re is really only three feet tall, then he's in a hobbit hole right now. Well, except we're on the second floor, so I guess it would be a hobbit walk-up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Craig says, that's all right then. Yeah, see, no girlfriends. Yeah, nerds don't have girlfriends. Um, Curse is foiled away. Again, sorry, keep Michaels awake. Uh, which, by the way, that, that's a whole joke. James here uh, is, there's, there's a guy named James. He's got the username there, Keep Michael Awake, because what he likes to do, especially on my late night streams, you know how sometimes when I come to bed, you're like, why the heck is it so ridiculously late? Yeah. It's because of this guy. Okay. Because uh, what he does is he waits until the credits are almost over, and then he throws a dollar into the super chat, wants to see an animation, then I start the credits again, and right when they're almost over, he does it again and again and again. So... Hence his username, keep Michael away. Okay. Um, oh, crap. Here he goes. First, he's going to rip on Shazam and then Aquaman. I didn't rip on Aquaman at all, even though it looks like it sucks. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think Aquaman looks better? I know you think Jason Momoa looks good. Oh, he, he looks real good, but he's not going to save that movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Shazam should be right after The Flash on CW. You are 100% <laughs> right. That's what we should be. See that's what it looks like. It really looks like that's the production value. Um, my favorite Starfleet class ship is the Galaxy X Dreadnought. Yeah, and someone was asking you earlier what's your favorite Star Trek spaceship? Um, the Enterprise, the original Enterprise. The original from the 60s yeah. or the one from, from the, the Kirk from the, movies? No, from the 60s. Okay. There you go. She's, she's kind of on board with me. I flirted with a midget once, slightly ridiculous as I'm six foot two. Okay, Derek. Uh, you're not a nerd. You have friends and a stable life, you normie. <laughs> Did, uh, can you vouch for my nerdiness? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay. And my large shoes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Aquaman has to be rubbish. I tend to agree. Uh, and, and no offense to uh, Darren. I know Darren really... Because apparently, what, one thing that Darren's a little upset at me about is the fact that this Aquaman, the Jason Momoa Aquaman, is fairly consistent with the later Aquaman that we've seen in the comic books from like the 2000s era. 
And I never read him then. I only knew Aquaman wearing the stupid orange and green thing like he looks like in Super Friends. And so he, he thinks that I, I hate Aquaman because I don't know the Warlord version of Aquaman that Jason Momoa's character is based on. But the thing is, it still looks like a crappy movie. That's my problem. Acid Designs is in the house. Good to see you, Acid. Uh, he's the other artist that I told you about earlier that uh, likes to make lots of cool pictures for me. All right. Hey. <laughs> Anthony is also here, Wants puts a dollar in the chat, wants to see the classic number one. I don't know if you've seen this one yet, babe, but I think you'll appreciate it. Uh, it's, yeah. So that is my lovely work photoshopping the Infinity Gauntlet. I have seen that one. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you'd seen that or, yeah, or not. I have. Okay. Uh, nerds don't like Notebook. Yes, I told them that you convinced me to watch The Notebook, and I actually liked it. Well, it's very similar to our story. We'll see when we get to the end we get that old. Yeah, so, yeah, so hopefully not quite the ending there. I just said we'll see. When, <laughs> I like the ending, actually. I think that'd be that's a good ending. You didn't. You didn't even know. Uh, oh, look, I'm not. I'm not pretending to be an expert on everything I saw in the trailer. But they look like giant alligators, and it doesn't matter. Neither one exists. Not in the real world today. Um, so, yeah. The turn super chat for the Flash. Uh, let's see. It says Andy Tracker. The turd super chat for the Flash is. The flush, and he is wet, sticky turd, and he leaves brown streaks everywhere he goes. Oh, that's horrible. That's that, that's a that's not a bad idea, but that's horrible. <laughs> um, Quantum Leaper says Acid made a new logo for me. It looks awesome. Yeah, a Acid is an awesome artist, you guys. Absolutely, he is. Um, uh, he 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 is great. Um, my next favorite Starfleet ship class is Ambassador, Excelsior, Nebula, Constitution, Refit, Enterprise A, TOS Enterprise, Ares class, and the N NCC-1650. I don't know what the NCC-1650 is. Most of those others, I think, are cool-looking ships, except the Nebula looks kind of squished up to me. Which, And I know that most of those, if I just list off the names, Mrs. Antitrek will be like, yeah, um, show me a picture. <laughs> And, and if I showed you a picture of almost all those, you would recognize them. It's just that, you know, you know how us nerds are. Yeah. Uh, 25 years married. Congrats. Is this going to be your silver anniversary? Yes. And what I'm going to do is get her a silver bullet to kill any werewolves. <laughs> Which she would actually appreciate that. Yes, I would. <laughs> um, well, take a shot every time he says, babe, in the stream, you'll be dead. Yeah, that's <laughs> my go-to when, when I'm talking to her. I call her babe. Uh, you forgot the one dollar clip. I did. Okay, hold on. I'll get the one dollar. I usually reserve that for the end credits, but uh, let's get that for you. I have got something better. There's your dollar. And <laughs> so, Mrs. Anti Checker, when he was looking up the poop sounds and making the gauntlet, did you think to yourself, "I picked a winner, or should have listened to Laura's cat"? Um, I think he can do whatever he wants now at this age. We've been together for so long. Whatever he does is not surprising or anything to me anymore. Yes. It's the big shoe size, that's all. That's the <laughs> only reason she's still around. Uh, alligators are not real. Whew, what a relief. That's not what I said, and you know it. Um, Anthony throws a couple of bucks into the chat, says, give the lady her own show. So I think Anthony <laughs> likes you better than me. That's kind of hurting my feelings now. <laughs> it wants to see number six. <laughs> I do love that one. Um, although it does look like the thing is pooping on him, but yeah. Um, she says as she sits there in silent judgment. <laughs> I also like the USS Kelvin, the Franklin, Enterprise B. You just like, in that case, Captain Jesse, you pretty much just like every ship you've seen, except for the Obertha, apparently. 
And Ricky likes the Oberth and Olympia classes because Ricky is the dumbest person in our chat today. Um, like that you like the Battlestar Galactic reboot TV series, even though it became obvious that they were making it up as they went along. I really liked it myself. I think they had a general direction where they were going with the show, but yeah, there were some things that they kind of, I think, lost track of where they were heading and uh, veered a little bit here and there. But I think overall the show is really good. Can we get a quick camera reveal? The curiosity's intense. Um, you'd have to ask Mrs. Antitrekker. If she says yes, the answer is yes. If she says no, the answer is no. Nope. Nope, not going to happen. Um, and you know what? There's a very true ancient saying that I live by, which is happy wife, happy life. So I ain't going to point the camera at her. Hey, um, I know you're talking about, hey, I know what you're talking about when you're talking about the shoe size. Yeah, I'll bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will Mrs. Antitracker be a regular now? Well, that's up to her. I, I kind of twisted her arm a little bit and said, hey, we got to have some fun with the guys and, and do a Sunday show. And so if if you ever see me on on a Sunday, at least in between now and October, then that means Mrs. Antitrekker are doing a, uh, a show together. Uh, Sci-Fi Sis says, Antitrekker, through thick and thin, always together for both, uh, for both you and Mrs. Antitrekker. That is correct. And boy, we've been through a lot of thick and thin oh yeah <laughs> um are you guys gonna start watching sg1 it's actually really good well i'm trying to convince her so you guys got to convince her that sg1 is worth watching good luck <laughs> king waspinator says that it would take a 500 hundred dollar super chat for the reveal so would you show your face if they gave you 500 dollars? nope wow um but Craig likes your voice, so he's got good taste, so good for you. Uh, any hope for Discovery? Uh, I'm going to see season two with an open mind, but I doubt it. Uh, Quantum Leaper wants you to say, so be it, lore master, like in the animation where Palpatine says, so be it, lore master. <laughs> so be it, lore master. That's actually not bad. <laughs> And now Kronos actually is paying you here, so it's two bucks into the chat, says, can we please hear mmm from Mrs. Antichecker? Okay. Mmm. Yes, there it is, guys. And I'm married to it. 25 years. Uh, Stargate SG-1 is totally worth watching, says Quantum. Kronos also says SG-1 is worth watching. Uh, O'Neill is a really fun character. Convince Mrs. Antitrekker to watch SG-1 with $1,000 worth of chocolates. Well, give me the $1,000, and then I can get the $1,000 worth of chocolates. Although she, she I don't could. eat chocolate, really. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to find something else. But I'm sure I could find something to bribe her with. Uh, Mrs. Antitrekker features a lot of half-naked bodybuilding fight, uh, fighting each other with giant penis-shaped <laughs> sticks. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ricky says, I'm in season two of SG1. It's been meh so far. Although I have heard people say that the first two seasons are, are a little slow and then it picks up. Um, at least the Discovery Enterprise um, is not the worst Enterprise every. And then it cuts off. I'm not sure what you were saying there. I think ever. Oh, yeah, probably ever, ever yeah. yeah. Um, I would agree. The Discovery Enterprise, uh, design-wise, it's actually a nice-looking ship. It's just that it's not the freaking Enterprise. Um, and it pisses me off because they're pr trying to pretend that this is the Enterprise. Uh, does Mrs. Andy Trekker like MacGyver? Did you ever watch MacGyver? No. Okay. See, I was always working back then. I was working graveyard, so... Uh, I didn't watch pretty much anything, but... When was that? In the... It wasn't MacGyver, like... Late 80s, early 90s? If it was then, I was I was clubbing all the time, so... Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'd have to look it up, but... Let's see, when was MacGyver? Now, you love Magu MacGruber. I do, I love MacGruber. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see... MacGyver, oh, that's the remade show that looks horrible. Uh, oh, it's 1985. I didn't realize that old. 
Yep, I was clubbing in 1985. Yeah. So, yes. 1985, she was clubbing. I was just being a nerd. Um, does Mrs. Antichrist... Oh, no, I already read that. Uh, the only two... And the last two seasons are horrible, horrible. The Ori really suck. Well, that you guys aren't making a good case for watching the show, then. Um, I mean, honestly. Um... Antichrist, I'm hoping the Flashpoint movie does a reboot, and I don't, I don't know, I don't even care if they make the Flashpoint. I'd just say just do the frickin' reboot. Uh, I'm hoping the, uh, or I, what do you think of Deep Space Nine, Craig asks. I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't my favorite, but I did like it. I liked it a lot, especially in the, uh, during the Dominion War stuff, but the, yeah, I think that it was it was it was good. I mean, I, I liked it. It's my second favorite Trek show. Um, if Mrs. Anti Trekker likes a strong wait, Anti Trekker. If Mrs. Anti Trekker likes strong women lead character named Samantha Carter, she'll like Stargate SG One. So, do you like strong women leads? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, this is the Enterprise from Discovery. Okay. And you see how it looks different. It, yeah. And so it's not a bad looking ship to me. It's just not the Enterprise. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, did you say married to it? I, I don't I believe don't you did. So. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Don't make me unsub you, Waspin. <laughs> Uh, Waspin here, don't do it. There's there's something like 17 seasons of Stargate material to watch. You'd better uh, you have better ways to spend your time. Wow, Waspinator's <laughs> just like not helping. Uh, Lore Reloaded does a good Mrs. Anti Trekker impression. I'd I'd like to hear that. Yeah, I, yeah, I I don't think so. Um, it's 11 seasons, so SG One is 11 seasons long. That is a long show. Um, I like all the spinoffs of Stargate SG-1 as well as the spinoff Stargate uh, Atlantis. Um, yeah, and that's the other thing. It's like there's SG-1 and then there's all the other Stargate shows that came off of it. Um, John Ford says SG-1 had some good storytelling in it. When it's good, it's really good. It also features strong characters done right. And that's the thing. If the characters are good, then I can get into it. I mean, because that's really what the Expanse, what makes the Expanse work is a lot of good characters. I, and But I don't know. I... Not, I'm sure it'll take a while to get into, but I don't know. But you like the original Stargate movie, right? Um, did I like it? Yeah, I don't even remember that. Oh, come on, with Raw, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I did like that. Yeah, um, what's the thing on Anti Trekker's head that's moving? There's a thing on my head, it's like, a oh, that's this, right. Um, this is actually just the cover to a whiskey bottle. There, I, I just tucked it away so it won't move. Sorry. Um, so, never heard Laura say, mmm. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that would give you nightmares. Um, Star Trek, Picardy and Coke. <laughs> That's just bad. <laughs> Sci-Fi says, says anti Trekker, the ship may be beautiful, but... Not possibly as beautiful as Mrs. Anti Trekker. Well, you're right about that. And she's got some really nice bulkheads, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. And those warp nacelles. Mm -hmm. uh, funny and sad, the flip of a hat, they spent uh, an entire episode joking around, and at the end, O'Neill turns on the fields about losing his son. I assume, is that an SG1 thing? Because, but, okay. Uh, I miss Beast Wars. Uh, well, you're probably the only person. Derek says, time for a bit of Airwolf. No, we are not doing Airwolf anymore. And I will tell you why. The, the live stream of last night had not one, not two, but three copyright strikes against it. We are not going to start looking up other old, other old TV shows and putting them on because I'm not going through that anymore. Um... So, yay, she liked the Star Stargate film. The show is better. So, we'll see. Has she seen Laura shirtless? Not in person, I don't yes, think. Yes, I have. Oh, oh, that's right. Well, <laughs> no. when we were filming some of that stuff? Yes, yes, I have. Yeah. 
So yeah. So so what did, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I wish that bleach was okay to use in your eyes. <laughs> You know, it's funny you should say that because eye bleach is a very common thing when we watch the, the video that features Lord dancing. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, have you thought about a Kickstarter to build your own starship? I have not because, uh, I, I mean, what would I do? Build, you mean build a starship set? Build a 3D model of a starship? And why would I need Kickstarter to do that, other than the fact that it would just be nice to have the money? Uh, I don't know what we'll have to use. Uh, let's, let's see. I don't, I don't want to know what we will have to use to make us forget if Lord does, mmm, that Mrs. Anti-Trekker. <laughs> yeah, the mega, mega chat number one bleach doesn't work. It's just not enough. <laughs> uh, I really like the original Star Trek, but for some reason I never got into the Picard series. That's kind of how Mrs. Antitrekker is, wouldn't you agree? Yes. And I'll say this. I mean, the first two seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation were horrible. Um, I think that the show got better, but really it never resonated with me, even though there's some excellent, you know, like Best of Both Worlds and Chain of Command and The Inner Light are incredible episodes all of which punctuated by m insanely good performances by Patrick Stewart. And especially Chain of Command. That's, I think, your favorite. Uh, one of your favorites, anyway. Uh, that's the one with There Are Four Lights. You remember that? Do I remember what? When Picard was being tortured and... Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he was insisting that there were four lights. Yes. Um... But yeah, those episodes really stand out as being awesome, but the bulk of Next Gen to me is just like very milk toast. Sorry guys. Uh, what does what do you think what do you and Beloved think the new Star Trek series needs in order to be successful? Um Wow, what do you think could make Star Trek Discovery successful? Well, since I've only watched a couple episodes, I don't really know. <laughs> they need they need to change the Klingons back. I can say that. <laughs> oh yeah, they're by the way on the internet they are now officially called the Kling Orcs. Oh, see. Yeah. But yeah, they uh, um honestly, I think what they need to do is just start from scratch and pretend that show never happened and then try to try just try to come up with a new concept that's consistent with Star Trek. The biggest problem with Discovery is that it doesn't feel like Star Trek at all. And so just scrap it and make a Star Trek show. Um, Mrs. Antitricker, did you watch First Contact? Did you like it or hated it? <laughs> I, yes, I did, and I, I liked it. Yeah. See? And, and, I, and I've said before, and you know I've said, I like it, I just don't think it's the greatest movie ever. And now you liked it because you liked the Borg. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but yeah, I, it's a good, it's, it's, it's good. It's just not great. The Stargate franchise goes like this. Stargate season one through 10 and then Stargate Atlantis is five seasons. And finally Stargate universe is two seasons. Wow. That's a lot. Blingons equals Klingorks. Why Blingons? They don't work. Well, they do have like all that weird stuff they wear. Yeah. To be the prime universe um, and not crapping on old-time Star Trek fans. Yeah, good writing. That would help. But like I said, I think, honestly, they need to completely scrap the show because they've just done too much. And Mrs. Andy Trekker, like I said, she only watched the first couple episodes. But as you go into the season, you realize just how much they violate the canon of Trek. Uh, not just original series, but stuff from Next Gen. and, and just, It's just a mess. This show contradicts Trek left and right. So don't try to salvage it, scrap it, and start from scratch. Doesn't Captain George have a recording of anti Trekkers saying he likes Star Trek Discovery? I think he does, yes. Um, Kling Orcs, yeah, hoop, shout, shout, out, no. Okay, Derek, are you okay? Um... I don't think you can undo Star Trek Discovery. It's like trying to forget seeing a car wreck. It always pops in your head when you least expect. Oh. 
um, would you have been okay if the ship was the USS Constitution NCC 1700? Uh, you mean the, the ship they show in that clip? No, because it's not a Constitution class ship. It's just a ship that looks vaguely like one. Um, the problem is that that ship looks like it belongs in the JJ verse. It looks like, honestly, what I think the JJ verse Enterprise should have looked like. And the uh, to call that a prime universe version of the Enterprise is an insult. And to call it a, and we've seen in the original series. Uh, you know what half a dozen constitution class ships they all look exactly the same holodecks in Disco discovery totally wrong too early that's true uh, also the Gorn skeleton also I mean one of the biggest problems I have is the whole cloaking technology the fact that the Klingons won a war against the Federation but it's never mentioned uh, just remember if you're scared of dying the brig will let you out Okay. When would you want a Star Trek series to be set? I think that a period between Star Trek uh, 6 and TNG would have story potential. If you were going to do a new Star Trek series, babe, what, when would you have it? What timeline would you put it in? I don't know. I really don't know. Well, I mean, like, would you put it as a prequel show to the original series? Would you go, like, way out in the future? I'd probably go in the future. Yeah. I tend to think that, too, because... Uh, and I and I we've talked about it before, but honestly, there you have too many constraints. If you're doing a prequel, you got to be careful not to do things that have already supposedly been done for the first time, which is a big problem with Discovery. The first time a Starfleet captain ever had to take on a cloaked enemy ship was Captain Kirk and Balance of Terror, but now the you know apparently the Klingons all had cloaks because. They're orcs, and they can make cloaks. Why not? Uh, Mrs. Antitricker, are you afraid of what they might do to Spock in Discovery Season 2? Uh, or do you just plan on avoid watching it like the plague? I'll be avoiding it, and I'm sure that Antitricker will tell me all about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, when those Spock episodes come up, you know I'm going to be having nightmares and everything. Yeah. Um, Watch our product. Our fans are terribly dissatisfied with it. You'll love it. <laughs> That's kind of what their advertising is right now. Uh, are the decisions to make Discovery look and feel different the result of creative motivations or licensing? Creative motivations, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, there is no licensing issue with the original series and CBS. That's something people kind of get confused about. CBS owns the original series. They own the rights 100%. What Paramount owns is the film rights. So, like, you can't do the J.J. Abrams universe. You can't do the movie era stuff. But the TV shows all belong to CBS. So, yes, they have 100% rights to the original series. Mrs. Antitrekker, if you went to the Terran universe and Antitrekker there wasn't three foot tall, would you switch husbands or kill, or kill alternate Mrs. Antitrekker? You're talking about the Mirror universe. No. Okay. Keep the original. <laughs> There you go. See? I'm awesome. Since CBS owns Axanar, and if they were smart, they'd just make the movie and be done with it, maybe they get more Trekkers back on reservation. I agree. I think that that was a stupid thing to just shut them down. Cloaks and bags of holding, yes. Oh. Anti-Trekker, how would the chain of command go on your, sh uh, on your ship? You and Mrs. Anti-Trekker as captain for first officer or... Uh, Mrs. Antitrucker. Well, Mrs. Antitrucker is actually going to, she is the administrative leader of the ship, but she is like the captain's woman from the Mirror Universe. So she doesn't need a, she doesn't have a command position, so to speak, but yeah. Uh. Uh, <laughs> we'd have to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew you would step in on that. Um, everyone dies. It's the manner of our passing that matters. That is deep for a live stream um when i first saw jj's reboot of star trek i thought it wasn't that bad the more time passed more i thought that the more i came to realize it was effing stupid so what are your thoughts on the jj abrams star trek films it was all right i mean i you know i really liked the first two i thought star trek beyond was horrible but 
Um, Bob Newbell says, does Mrs. Antitracker watch The Expanse? She has watched every episode I have with me. Uh, we've watched the show together for the last couple of weeks, and we both enjoyed it immensely. Antitracker has a beard. Maybe he's already from the Mirror Universe, he hence Anti. That's where the name <laughs> comes from. We, we didn't have to wait for the 10,000 subs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have this thing, like, uh, I told everybody that I would not reveal why my name is Antitracker until I hit 10,000 subs. So okay. That's... Um, Alex, that is an excellent theory, but I will neither confirm nor deny anything you just said. Uh, I like Star Trek Beyond best of the JJ Treks. Well, Captain Jesse, that just goes to prove that you are not the host of this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, Craig says, I congratulate you on having good taste. Um, I assume you're talking about the fact that I... I, I, I didn't like Star Trek Beyond, or not sure what you mean there. Uh, Quantum Leaper says none of the JJ Treks were good. Yeah, and that's why you have people that just like absolutely despise the JJ stuff, and then people that think they're awesome. Um, we tend to fall in between that. I mean, yeah. we we don't hate it, but we don't like rave over it either. Um, what now? I don't know if you if you even heard about this, but let me let me ask you because. I always talk to these guys about it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know about the, the whole Quentin Tarantino thing? No, not really. So apparently, here's the thing. Quentin Tarantino approached J.J. Abrams and pitched a Star Trek concept. And J.J. and Bad Robot approved it. Paramount went along. And now they are in pre-production for a Quentin Tarantino-directed R-rated Star Trek film. <laughs> I'll have to see that. I can't say anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to see that. Yeah, it's just... Uh, when are your Expanse reviews coming out since you finished The Expanse? I haven't finished yet. We're, we're mid... We just watched, what was it, episode five? Um, five I or was, six? I think it was seven. Seven? Really? That far? Uh, the, the one in, th in season three where it ends with the proto-molecule taking off. You guys that have seen it know what I'm talking about. Um... So that's where we are right now. So we haven't finished it yet, but uh, I'm going to probably start doing Expanse reviews in the next few weeks. Um, I'll bet you have her make sandwiches. No, she doesn't make sandwiches. Uh, like your sword fighting videos. Liking your sword fighting videos. My sword fighting video. Oh, you must be talking to um, Alex. Uh, Doomcock has JJ totally weighed up, bagged, and binned as appropriate. <laughs> Doomcock likes to rip people to shreds. He does. Uh, JJ verse makes Star Trek V look great. Now, come on, Josh. Mm -hmm. Star no, Trek no, V. No. <laughs> I, as much as I love the original cast of Star Trek, Star Trek V was horrible, and everything about it was horrible. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, I can't get my mind around the idea of Tarantino directing a Trek film. Yeah, that's the thing. I, uh, you know, it's, it, it just, yeah, I, I know, I heard one person joke that, like, they're going to refer to Klingons as Kliggers, and stuff like that, and it's, and it's just like, ugh, you know, I, I can't see the hard language, the hard violence, the gore, the, all the stuff that is cl classic Tarantino and works in Tarantino's films, I can't see in Trek. What do you think? No, I can't say that either. Yeah. When will we get Mrs. Anti Trekker's reviews on Hellraiser movies? Uh, <laughs> never. <laughs> Unless we do them together, maybe. I don't know. Well, you, all you'd have to do is write and record them, and then I can mm -hmm. edit them for you. Okay, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Star Trek V is a classic. Even Doomcock agrees. I, uh, I don't know that Doomcock's ever said that, but okay. Klingies, would that be better? Well, that would be less offensive, I suppose. But either way, I think that I just can't imagine a hard R-rated Star Trek. Now, granted, they're trying to push it that way with Discovery, but I don't... And, and here's the thing. It's not that... Like, Mrs. Antitrigger and I aren't prudes. Like, for example, if you guys have seen The Expanse, there's a lot of foul language in that. Uh, there's a little bit of nudity in it. There's a lot of graphic violence in it. And we both think it's an excellent show. But it all has to do with the context of how it's done. And Star Trek, the, the core premise of Star Trek has always been optimism. 
that's what the the central theme of trek has been from day one is an optimistic view about man's future not dystopia not world war three but a bright and prosperous future and the adventures of people going out and exploring the galaxy in in this wonderful bright and prosperous future tell me what's bright and prosperous about star trek discovery it's bleak it's cynical it's pessimistic and tarantino doesn't make optimistic films you know reimagined klingon's double penetration yeah yeah in fact mrs anti-trucker didn't know about the double junk that klingons have until i told her just the other day right yeah yeah so luke says anti-trucker most important question will samuel jackson be in the movie if so <laughs> this is the very uh uh, it will at the very least have so bad it's good factor. That's true. That is true, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I could see Samuel L. Jackson being like the captain of some other starship. That's like, because, you know, one trope that they've done, uh, and they tried to do it in Star Trek Beyond and I think failed, but they've done in the original series and they've done in, in other Treks, is the crazy Starfleet captain that went through too much. Right. Uh, so think about like um, Captain Tracy from the Omega Glory, the guy that killed all the the, the Yangs. Remember the mm -hmm. Yangs and the Combs? Mm -hmm. And where he's trying to find the Fountain of Youth, and he's just like he went nuts. Uh, the the dude from um, uh, Patterns of Force that was uh, helped set up a Nazi regime, right? And yeah. so Starfleet personnel that go crazy and do horrible things. Samuel L. Jackson is a crazy Starfleet captain. Uh, I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Waspinator loves Bur Bur Burnham, wants that booty sack. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Waspinator actually did put up a video where he was singing about Michael Burnham's butt. Okay. Um, I really like Tarantino as a director, but I can't see how he would make a good Star Trek film. That's my problem. I don't see that either. I genuinely just don't see how that works in the Trek universe. Um, and if it's good, it'll be mother effing good. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Engage mother effort. Yes, that's absolutely what we will. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I hate Star Trek Into Darkness because they, uh, because they use Khan wrecking his character and they switch their death scene near the end when Kirk is dying instead of Spock, like in the original. I didn't mind that that so much as because it felt to me like an homage. What did you think of the Kirk death scene in Into Darkness, and contrasted with the Spock death from Star Trek Two? I mean, I know Spock's death had more impact, but yeah. but did you like the Kirk scene? I thought it was actually well done. It, it was all right. Um, it was all right. I've had it with these mother effing Borg on my mother effing ship. <laughs> <laughs> See that that would make. If we, if we get Samuel L. Jackson in a Tarantino check, I will see it just because it will be freaking hilarious. Um, that would be, uh, yeah. Klingons break bones during, uh, seriously, who would want to say the Jet Z? Oh, yeah, Klingons break their bones during sex. We know that from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, in case you didn't know. Um, because, why not? Klingons are just violent. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think of it as an homage uh, or an homage, but a mockery. I disagree because it's it was if it was a, it's not like it was a parody, and it's not like it wasn't even Trek. I think it was a direct homage, and in fact, uh, I really liked in the Kirk Spock scene uh, from Into Darkness is that when Spock asked Kirk why he did it, he said it's what you would have done, which is exactly what in the alternate timeline happened. So I like that uh, because the you know I, I think that makes sense. Uh, it uh, it it could mark a new trend in handling these stale franchises over to higher tier directors who get do their own thing. The new Joker movie sounds amazingly good along those lines. But here's the problem, Ospinator, and I'm not saying Tarantino is not a talented director. Tarantino has made some incredibly good films. I'm sure you would agree. Mm -hmm. um, but we're talking Star Trek. Star Trek is, you know, if, if you change everything about a franchise, 
why call it that franchise, right? If you're going to take Star Trek and take away the optimism, change the uniforms, change the ships, uh, we'll change the music, we'll change the whole art direction of it, we'll change the aliens, we'll change the tone, and we'll change the, uh, the core audience from being um, you know, more or less uh, young adults to uh, only people that would go to a R-rated film. Why call it Star Trek at that point? How is that Star Trek in any way, shape, or form? Uh, Quantum Leap says, I would rather have Abrams over Tarantino. I agree. I think that, because I think that while Abrams' Star Trek was not perfect, at least it felt like Trek. You know, it, 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 it did. It didn't feel, there were some things I think they could have done better. Uh, like, I think the design of the Enterprise was horrible. But I like the fact that the characters in the Abrams film felt like they had the essence of the characters from the original series. Um... Uh, I like the Into Darkness death scene, but the shouting Khan seemed a little bit off, but not cringeworthy. I didn't like the, yeah, I didn't like Spock yelling Khan any more than I like Kirk yelling Khan. <laughs> that was, they were both pretty bad. Um, Wasmanier says, uh, think of his particular directing style, jumbled time, and the fact that he wants, he said he wants to do a city on the edge of forever, which would happen in an alternate timeline anyway. I, I get that. Tarantino could do it, but I, you know, when we'll see it. I mean, me, me and Mrs. Andy Trek have seen every Star Trek movie when they've come out since we've been together, and so we will go see it. The problem is we don't know if it'll be any good. Um, so pure Star Trek characters transplanted into a hard R-rated 1930s to provide contrast. So let me ask you this, babe. What, what, what? The, what Waspinator is talking about is the idea that in the Tarantino Trek, they have a time travel story where modern, optimistic, happy-go-lucky PG-13 Kirk, Spock, McCoy go back in time into an era that is very gritty and nasty and dirty. So let's say that they go back to the 1930s or, hey, heck, have them go back to the wild, wild west, only do it more realistic as far as the way things are you know, going. Like you have the ugliness of racism, you have the harsh language, you have graphic violence and all that stuff, but it's not attributed to the main Trek characters, it's everyone around them in this world they're in. Do you think that works? It could. I think it could. Um, Luke says, uh, honestly, I've yet to see J.J. Abrams finishing a franchise instead of starting one. I don't think he's good at doing so uh, at all. Lost series, anybody? <laughs> um, but here's the thing. Yeah, J.J., you're right in that, well, J.J. was created, uh, brought over to Trek just to relaunch it, and then he was brought over to Star Wars to relaunch that, and that's kind of what he's good at. Uh, we'll see how good he is at wrapping things up when he does Episode Nine. but, man, I feel sorry for J.J. because he can't, you know, and I don't know about how you feel, babe, but I don't think J.J. can win because Star Wars Episode Nine has got to come off of the abomination that was Episode Eight, And so no matter what J.J. does, he's got to work with what Ryan Johnson left him. Yeah. Yeah. You are just like <laughs> one-word answers. That's Mrs. Antitrust. Well, this is your going off on your thing here. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> All right, yeah, speaking of going off, it is actually getting on the late side, and me and Mrs. Antitrekker have to have our anti-dinner. So, with all that, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us and hanging out with me and Mrs. Antitrekker today. Um, if you guys like what you saw here, let me know, and we'll see about doing that again. And otherwise, assuming you let me get through the credits, you guys take care. <laughs>
It's the anti-checker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. I should have known Kronos since Kronos is here he's the only he's the other person that likes to throw a lot of super chats in says just need to say thank you to Mrs. Andy Trekker you were awesome um so thank you Kronos I do appreciate it and of course you know Kronos don't don't leave me hanging you know you got to pick one uh, while we're waiting for that Andy Trekker and Mrs. Andy Trekker live long and prosper may the force be with you always that's sci-fi sis uh usual sign off thank you so much yeah and of course now, and Kronos wants to see number eight, of course. Mm-hmm. Borg, Borg, Borg. Do, do, Borg. In chippin, chippin, de Borg. Borgy, come here, Borgy. Chuppy, chuppy, Borgy. Okay, so you get to sign on. You know, give, give them your, your sexy sign off. And that was Kronos? Yeah. What, am I, what, what do you want me to hear? I don't know. Say something sexy to him. Thank you, Kronos. It means <laughs> so much to both of us. Hey, the anti-checker we will return to your scheduled programming shortly or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties wants to throw one pound into the chat because he just can't bear to see us go away thank you alex i do appreciate it uh, which which one did you want and of course this is where they try to stall as much as they possibly can mm-hmm. and so what's gonna be alex don't don't leave me hanging here all right number 14 you got it that i actually really like this one i don't know if you've seen it since we put the sound in but i love uh, i think it really works Heart attack. Well, that was easier than I expected. This is going to be a great day. And now, off to my first day of work on Endor. And just so you know, um, Captain George finds that extremely annoying because I don't say Forest Moon of Endor. But that was for Alex, so now you got to say, give a nice goodbye to Alex. Alex, it's so hard to let you go. Goodbye. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Oh, <laughs> 
saw me but captain redneck is here mm -hmm. and so you know what you need to say for him uh, captain redneck is on the bridge <laughs> so there you go captain redneck a live rendition of your wonderful greeting and chronos of course wants number 13 because he's a jerk You're wrong, your highness. I am lore reloaded. A lore master. Like my father before me. So be it, lore master. If you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. You will pay the price for not going with the studio's vision. Father, please! Huh? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Redneck, I think you got a little excited by your uh, <laughs> talking to him there. <laughs> and so, uh, Captain, <laughs> did you have a request, my redneck friend there, other than to say, hell yeah. <laughs> Or a request, I assume you would have a request for Mrs. Auntie Trekker. So now we get to wait for, the problem is there's like a, I'm sure you know, there's like a 30 second response from what I say to when they hear it. Yeah. Which is kind of weird sometimes. America, he wants you to say America. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Didn't come across as sexy there. <laughs> you could do a sexy version of it. America. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Captain Redneck throws up for a vote. So now I assume you want we, we do one of the mega chat rewards. So one, two, or three <laughs> for the mega chat rewards. Everybody throw your number in the chat right now. Uh, whoever starts getting the getting the votes quick is going to win so we'll see what happens and now of course i gotta wait and ramble on for a second while i everybody realizes what i've already said we got one we got three we got one we got three tar three wants nothing why are you putting zeros in there raven three three is the tiebreaker so we get three my personal favorite i think the single greatest super chat reward ever created In the great hall of the Justice League, there floats the world's four greatest turds. Created from cosmic indigestion, Super Turd! Wonder Turd! Bat Turd! Aqua Turd! And those two junior super turds, Lore Reloaded and Punchy the Wonder Cat. Yes, the super turds, the greatest superhero team ever to come out of Warner Brothers <sighs> because they suck. Um, Good, no topless lore, says Darth. But here's the thing. So after Alex broke the tie with number three, we got two votes for number one from King John and Acid Designs. So, and since Redneck threw in 20 bucks, I kind of feel like I, I have to put, put on the dreaded Quantum of Force. So get your eye bleach ready, guys, because here comes the dancing lore. I may have a It's 
not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean <laughs> Take the bloody sh Video featuring Laura Reloaded dancing naked in the history of videos. <sighs> so, uh, thank you so much to Captain Redneck for your generous donation that made that possible. And so, will you give Redneck a nice little sign off as we roll the credits one more time? Good night, Captain. Come back again soon. The Anti-Trekker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties.